Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, Steve, how do you keep your hair so shiny and healthy? To which I say, son of a bitch, it's four degrees outside. <laughs> I do not have time for your crap. It is four degrees outside. I am from Phoenix. I do not work well in four degree weather. I don't work at all in four degree weather. And you know what really pisses me off about the weather? What? You no, know what really pisses me off about the weather. I went to go pick up Emerald from school and I'm just and I got there a little bit early, like five minutes early. So I'm just sitting there and I'm watching kids come out of classrooms and watching kids like run from the, the auditorium to their cars. There's all these motherfuckers in shorts and short sleeves yeah. and sandals. They're freaking sandals and shit. And it depends. You're watching them run out of the gym after practice. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. No, I, I agree. You're not impressing someone. You're not impressing anybody. Go dab somewhere. <laughs> People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that there is no way that Trump actually passed his freaking physical exam. No. No way. He paid somebody off because that doctor is on TV going, uh, uh, he could live to be 200 years old. Great genes, uh, excellent cognitive functions. Bitch, he is one pound away from being obese. That's sure convenient. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no way that that greasy tub of gold plated lard actually passed that frickin' physical. <laughs> and what I, also know is that I have been a loyal and loyal employee at my local bookstore for over 17 years. And yes. you know what else? You know what else is 17 years old, Bunny? What? I, I find this to be amazing. I went out looking for something that was also 17 years old. So you know what else is also 17 years old? The X-Men movies. Really? Yeah. Yeah, huh. I went looking for things that also uh, that also started in 2000. And sure enough, the frickin' first X-Men movie came out in the year 2000. And I would like to think that both the X-Men franchise and I have both aged wonderfully. Thank you very much. Yes. The, I think the, we've both aged very well. The, the first of comic book movies. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah, oh, wow. depending... Depending on, on, on your thoughts regarding Blade, then yes. Yeah, where you want to stake your flag. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so what uh, you're saying is you need to be careful about Disney buying you. Yeah. yeah, I'm hoping that just like the X-Men franchise, I too will soon be purchased by Disney. Yes. Yes, so. I think there is a good chance that we, we are all... all bought and owned to the Disney Corporation. And as far as it goes for corporations, it's kind of fun that it's Disney. Yeah. The, the <laughs> you way, know? The way that it's going to be is that there's, in the future, there's going to be three sections. America is going to be cordoned off into three sections. Uh -huh. This section of the West Coast is owned by Amazon. Yes. <laughs> and then this swatch of the Midwest is uh, the nation of Monsanto. Yes. And uh -huh. then the West Coast is entirely owned by the Disney Corporation, and they're constantly fighting each other. <laughs> yes. I can fucking see that. <laughs> yeah, that's basically the future. It'll boil down to three corporations that will constantly be fighting each other for supremacy. Yeah. Well, it was only and, three. It was only three nations in 1984, so it comes down to the same yeah. thing there. Yeah. So anyway, Bunny, I have an aside here. In trying to find something that was also 17 years old, I discovered a story, and I wanted to mention it here in the podcast because it's been a while since I've done the year was, and so I don't know when the next time is that I'll be able to mention this story, and it's a good story, so I wanted to mention it. Okay. So. So people, a lot of people buy tombstones early. Yes. 
Yes, so, that was the only the, the only part of the Y two K bug that was true. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I, I, you buy them from. I'm assuming they're called Tombstone Engineers. Yeah, Tombstonians, Tombstonites, Tombstonites. And the way that they've always done it is uh, these tombstonites, you know, a, a a huge percentage of their sales come from people who are just uh, planning ahead and trying to get their their, you know, their situation in order. And so here I will buy this tombstone early. We have the money and there you go. This is the way I want it to look. This is the way I want it to, to be. So the tombstone engineers, the way that they always did it was I will put your name. I will put whatever quote you want. I'll put your birthday, March 22nd, 1977. And then I'll put died blank, blank, 19 blank. Yes. That's the way that they always did that. So it's estimated that tens of thousands of tombstones had to be thrown away or destroyed. Because I imagine that there's like a 93-year-old man who's in a hospital somewhere and said, yes, it's 1995 and I'm going to be dying soon. Let's buy that. Let's buy, let's buy a tombstone. Mm. And then like six years later, he's like, damn it! <laughs> Well, there's, I don't know how much tombstones cost. There's $5,000 gone to waste. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, but, the then the, but then the thing is, is, is now you are <laughs> cursing yourself for being alive. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. They, and there has to be at least one person who, who like is about to die, is about to die. And then they die at like 12.02 yeah. a.m. And people are like, you know what? Close enough. <laughs> I would have to go with. I would have to go with like, okay, look. What would it cost if you just chisel a line into the nineteen? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Just 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 chisel a line in there or an X and put a, yeah, an X. Yeah, put a twenty under it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. Thankfully, thankfully though, that's not a problem for me because I buy all of my tombstones at Rocco and Vinny's Discount Tombstone Emporium. Rocco and Vinny's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocco and Vinny's Discount Tombstone Emporium. They are the place to go if you want quality, affordable tombstones. Yes, yes. It's always a little weird how they measure stone in its ability to float. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's density it is is really what they're concerned with most, and yeah. affordability. You know, yeah. So affordability. Yeah, yeah. It, it's that's just, what I was. I, I, I wouldn't think that would be a unit of measurement you would use. Yeah, they're right next to the. They're actually they're actually conveniently located right next to the Black Dress Warehouse. Yes. So, so that helps. And as such, we I have really to start drawing this city. <laughs> we do. And as such, I really do have my skeletal fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here to rub my skeletal fingers across your cheek with this week's remarkably unremarkable installment of Notes from the Bookstore! Dun, dun, dun. And, and this week's edition of Notes from the Bookstore is brought to you by the book Fire and Fury. Hey, gang, you remember that book everyone was talking about three weeks ago? Well, guess who finally got a small amount? <laughs> Your local bookstore, so come on down. Yes, we finally got the amount we should have gotten on January 5th. So come on down to your local bookstore. It's not our fault, we swear. <laughs> And speaking of our triple bypass in chief, I want to have a totally work relation, a uh, totally work related discussion here about Donald Trump for a minute, if I may. Yes. So recently, the website Axios landed a scoop, a scoop, a scoop. by uncovering Trump's secret schedule. Yes. 
So every day, the White House press secretary, Sarah Huckabee Cabbage Patch Sanders, uh, uh, goes in front of the press and shares the president's daily work schedule. But apparently there are two schedules. Apparently, President Trump's actual daily schedule is much lighter than the one that they released to the public, which is so 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 there's the one that he says he's doing the schedule he says he's doing. And then the actual schedule, which is super short and full of lengthy breaks throughout the entire day, which he calls executive time, (laughs) executive time, because that sounds really important. But it's really just him alone in the White House bedroom, watching TV, making phone calls, drinking dangerous amounts of diet coke and tweeting whatever triggers him on fox news yeah in fact um i've I've got one of his i've got i've got i went to axios and i got one of his schedules one of his actual schedules here this is a this is a work day for our president so on tuesday trump started with his his first meeting of the day with chief of staff john kelly at 11 a.m uh-huh so he has an hour meeting and then he has executive time for an hour after that, followed by an hour lunch in the private dining room. Then after lunch, it's another hour and 15 minutes of executive time, followed by a 45 minute meeting with National Security Advisor H.R. McMasters. Then another 15 minutes of executive time before Trump takes his last meeting of the day, a 345 meeting with the head of presidential personnel, Johnny De Stefano, before ending his official day at 415. Uh huh. That's yeah. less except than three for, hours except of work. For, except for Wednesday, which is anything can happen day. That's less than three hours of work. Yeah. He gets executive time every morning from 8 to 11 a.m. His first meeting is usually his daily intelligence briefing at freaking 11 in the afternoon. (laughs) Then he's allowed a number of executive time breaks throughout the day. Sometimes he'll only work a six or seven hour day. He's he's not even full time. (laughs) People say I'm 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 upset I'm upset with our president. He's barely frickin' president. <laughs> Meanwhile, here I am waking up at 5:50 a.m. every morning, getting angry, ungrateful kids ready for school, waking Bella up nine times every morning, and then finally, when they're gone, driving nearly an hour to work, sometimes in four degree weather, and then working a full shift. Sometimes not even the president does that, by the way. He doesn't even work a full (laughs) shift, but I do. And it's a full shift of heavy lifting and picking up stuff and lifting heavy boxes and moving things. And I'm on my feet and it's exhausting. And I finish my day, my full day. Sometimes I'll even work. I'll even work longer than a full day. I'll work uh, some weeks. I'll work 41 hours, 42 hours, 42 and a half hours. That's a long day. So I finish my day. And I drive the hour drive back home and I arrive at my house tired and exhausted and broken, bunny. I am a broken man. Yes. Tired. Bones hurt. But is my day over? Ooh, no. I'm a dad. <laughs> and dads don't get time off for good behavior. Dads don't get executive time at home. So it's time for me to get Maxwell ready and time for to get Maxwell fed and in bed. It's time for me to wrestle my 12 year old into bed all the while she's yelling, screw you, which is super fun. Yeah. Uh, it's it, Then it's time to feel old and outdated as my teens date and fool around and think about college. Emerald used to be attached to my hip bunny. Now I don't even know her. <laughs> then there's Eleanor. Then there's Eleanor, who is a freaking terrorist. She is a terrorist, Bunny. I've come up with a theory about Eleanor. I've come up with a theory about Eleanor, okay? She's like a year and a half. She's like a year and a half. She's like in like, she's, she's all, she's about a year and a half old. But here's the thing. We're, we're always telling her, don't do that. Don't pick that up. Don't pick that up. What did I just say? Don't pick that up. Don't do that. No, no. Leave your brother alone. Don't hit your brother with that stick. Here's the thing. You know, because sometimes we say, oh, you know, she's young. She's just trying to figure things out. She's trying to figure out what's right and wrong. She's trying to figure out what to do. No, here's the thing. This is my theory. She already knows right from wrong. She's just so advanced that she is now doing psychological experiments to see what she does 
what she can do to break us. Uh huh. Is that every day it's just a different experiment? Oh, Emerald's door is open. Well, it's time for experiment number 87. See how much of her expensive makeup I can ruin until she loses her shit. <laughs> Oh, hey, Maxwell's laying down on the floor watching TV. It's time for experiment 93. Let's grab a stick and hit him in the head until he cries. How long is this going to take? <laughs> Daddy has his podcast notes. I know not to touch these podcast notes. It's time to touch these podcast notes. Let me get a crayon, a Sharpie, and some milk. This is going to be a fun experiment, guys. <laughs> Meanwhile, our president, who holds the most important job in our nation, the most important job in our nation, uh -huh. he gets to stroll into work at the crack of 11 in the afternoon, take two or three meetings, and then go home! Yeah. That's not a job. Donald Trump is not our president. He's not our president. You have to be, you have to do work to be a president, and you don't do crap! <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is... yes. And this is absolutely true. I recently asked my store manager for executive time. Okay. I told her that that um, you know, I'm a I'm a receiving manager now. I'm an executive, really. And as an executive, I need executive time breaks. If this is good enough for our president, yes. Then I need three or four hour long breaks throughout my work day where I can just lay down and bed eat a cheeseburger and tweet so not only will i be needing executive time but also i'm gonna need a bed back here uh-huh and good, cheeseburger. Good, good, good. so she was surprisingly into it <laughs> she actually said like yeah no problem i'll get on that but just to be clear that may or may not be the whiskey talking <laughs> What I'm saying is, is that I got the okay. I got the green light. So I'm going to be having a lot of executive time. Yeah. Basically, I'm going to be, I'm going to do the exact same thing that President Trump does, except I'm only going to tweet things that trigger me from PBS kids. All right. I'm going to be laying in bed, eating a cheeseburger, watching TV, and then going, it is disgusting. How uh, the TV show Super Y focuses so much on Wyatt and not on the other members of the Super Reader team. <laughs> Hashtag make PBS great again. <laughs> Don't even get me started on Sesame Street. <laughs> You want to know how much of a professional I am, Bunny? I scheduled a meltdown. Yes. That is good. I penciled in a breakdown. That's how much of a professional I, I am. Yes. There's now, no I'm, arguing with that. Thank you. Now, I want to, uh, before I continue with this last bit of uh, bookseller news, I want to once again, unequivocally, state beyond a shadow of a doubt that this part of the show this whole segment yes is absolutely 118 percent false a fable fictitious completely made up okay 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 so we have a new policy which doth has been hath been passed down from the executives in the heavens. Uh-huh. Basically, we're not allowed to say no. We don't have that book. Okay. And I quote, and I quote from nothing, because again, this is all fake. I, I quote from <clears throat> the, the, the sheet that, that we were all given. Quote, when a customer asks us if we have any book, our response should be, yes, we have the book, because it's simply a matter of where we get the title from. Okay. So, so we're not supposed to say, oh, we don't have that book. Technically, we do have it. It's just in a warehouse. 
Well, that's that's kind of how Amazon works. It it's just it's just like we don't have it in the store, but we can order it for you. So now we're supposed to say, yes, we do have that. We can order it for you, and it will be here in uh, a bit, about a week and a half. Yeah. And then they go, oh, so wait, so you have it? It's, it's, it's basically a semantics thing. Yeah. The only problem is that our usual regular customers, of course, are angry 69-year-old grandmothers from Kent, Ohio, who want to speak to the manager. <laughs> There's no way that these old fogies are going to understand us. Yes, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm looking for this book. Uh, here it is, right here. Do you have this? Do you have this book? Sure, we have that book for you. And uh, 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 yeah, we have that book. It's available for instant download on bn.com. Wait, so do you do you do you have the book? <laughs> Uh, we have the book, and I can ship it directly to you. If you're a member, you'll receive free express shipping. Wait, wait, so you do have the book? Yes, the title you're requesting is available on the website. I'd happy to be show you how to place an order. Look, look, son, look, son, look, son. Look, you're, you're being too vague. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. There's no way that these there's no way that these people are going to understand what's going on. <laughs> it's, it's just going to piss everybody off. Yes. And even if someone is asking for a for a book and the book doesn't even isn't even made, what we're supposed to say is, well, we do not have that title in stock or in our warehouse. I can recommend similar titles. Okay. We're not, even, we're not even supposed to say no when someone is looking for a book that isn't even that doesn't even exist anymore. God. Even then, we're still supposed to say yes. Yeah. It's a bit ridiculous. That is that is ridiculous. That and the, and the thing is, I think that would just wind up pissing off more customers because that would piss me off. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You know. Yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, that is it for notes from the bookstore this week. Oh wait, no, I'm not done. I'm not done. Uh uh Hey. Hey mister. Hey mister. Hey. Uh you uh you looking for a good time? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Uh, I I I I I yeah. Because I really need some shelvers to put away product. All right. Okay. I, I, I got a full back room just full of stuff waiting to go out, and I would do anything for some good, high quality shelvers. Okay. And I mean, I would do anything. <laughs> Are you interested, mister? Uh, yeah. Why not? Okay, now I'm done. Sounds like fun. Now I'm done. Now I'm done. <laughs> and remember, boys and girls and gay dinosaurs, I don't know what that means. That was written by Isabella, my daughter, age 12. You too can save 10% on all of your purchases, and all you have to do is get a lion hooked on narcotics. <laughs> I also don't understand that one. That one was also written by Isabella, age 12. Okay. It, it, but you know, I don't mean to 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 disrespect my daughter, but something tells me it would be pretty easy to get a lion hooked on narcotics. It, it probably would. I, I the one that always stumped me is if you remember for a long time they had a problem breeding pandas. <clears throat> yeah. So for a while in the in the zoo world, there was panda pornography. Yeah. They would show pandas videos of other pandas fucking. Yeah. Which led me to think, how'd they get the pandas on the video to fuck? Why don't they just do that? 
Yeah, that was that was during that period in time when they were like, okay, we need to make some panda pornography. Oh man, if only there was somebody at this zoo that could uh, play the guitar, and then suddenly some janitor's like, bow chicka wow wow. <laughs> I knew this. This is my time to shine. Yes. <laughs> bow chicka wow wow. And cut on notes from the bookstore. That was a good notes from the bookstore. 